Hi, I'm Maimon, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to test the ignition coils on a Honda Insight to make sure that they are working properly. You know, you're basically looking to make sure that they haven't shorted out. And the way that we do this is through using a multimeter and connecting the prongs to check their resistance. If you haven't watched my previous video on how to remove the spark plug in ignition coil on a Honda Insight Generation 2, go check it out. We'll link it in the description down below. Uh, it's especially useful so that you can take this out and actually test it. And also check out my other video on if you got the code O P O 300 to P O 304. Hey, Irelia. And so we're gonna get right to uh, right to testing the ignition coils. So what we're going to do with the ignition coils is you have a set of four in the front of the engine that look like this, and you have a set of four in the back of the engine that look like this. Notice where the bolts, the bolt holes are in re in respect to the uh, cable port. You just want to keep a note of that. Um, and one thing you all want to do is just label them to make sure you don't lose track of them. So we'll write one on the top of this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through each and every single one of these ignition coils to check their prongs. We're going to connect two of their prongs and check for the resistance between them. And we're going to write it down. So we're going to check the resistance between the middle and the right one. I'm assuming the middle is common, so it should be a good baseline. All right, so let's turn this on. I also have done a video on this if you're interested in watching it. I'll also link it in the description down below. Very nifty tool, it's an auto multimeter. So we're going to take the cap off to make this easier for us. And we're gonna check the resistance between these two prongs. If you look over there, it says 1.897 mega ohms. And so what we want to do is we'll, we'll say for ignition coil one, uh, 1.89 mega ohms. And you want, to do, you want to keep doing this for all uh, eight ignition coils. And what, you're, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find, okay, um, is there one ignition coil that doesn't have the same uh, resistance that the other ones have? That one's a bad one. Alternatively, we're trying to find, uh, I mean, we're just trying to find a range of proper resistances. And therefore, we would find out which one is not working because it's not in that range. Ideally, you would get a new ignition coil and you would measure it to find what, you know, the new proper range should be. One thing is that we don't have a new one. Uh, and second is that it's very expensive to buy a new ignition coil. They're like 80 to $100 per piece. So instead, we're going to just base it off the majority. And in that case, if all of them test to be consistent, that either means they're all good or they're all bad. Uh, and in that case, if, well, we can try, you know, connecting prong one and two and seeing if it's consistent there. If it's still consistent there, that means they're either all good or they're all bad. Okay, so let's try it with another one. And next one, we're going to do a back one, just so we can get some variety in here. One point eight seven. And we're right. The reason that we're writing them is not so this is the order that we replace them, but if we find one that's um, faulty and it's not labeled, then we're not, we're not going to be able to find the one that's faulty again without having to check it again. So this one just helps us later. So IC2 is 1.87 mega ohms. And you wanna keep doing that for all of them. So we'll do this one, we'll call it five. And I'm writing it in black Sharpie because you know, this is black. Even if you don't want to see it, you know, who's gonna see it if it's in black? Because, because the unit's already black. Yeah, this is gonna be very difficult. So you just gotta finagle it.
interesting. So this one reads 6.3 mega ohms. I'm just going to double check that. Oh, that was weird. I wonder why I read 6.8. Wait, so it matters the direction that you do it in. So if I do black in the middle and then red on the right side, it reads 6. But if I do it, that should not happen. Okay, also one thing, you can make it easier by putting the ignition coil on the ground and then being able to use your two hands to measure it. Uh, this one also measures 1.84. That's interesting that it measures differently depending on um, which terminal you use. Um, I can't think of an explanation for that. All right, so up to that point, I've been using the red uh, terminal, I mean the red probe on the middle pin. Uh, but when you put the black terminal on the middle pin, then it measures a different reading. I think as long as you are consistent about which uh, probe you use on which prong, then our method should work. Um, it seems pretty ironclad. Um, just make sure that you're consistent with red in the middle or black in the middle. My dad seems to think that the middle is, uh, is common, so it'd be a good idea to just always use the black probe on the middle prong. At least with that one, it seems like we would get a consistent reading of about 6.3 mega ohms, and we'll see that on the rest of the um, ignition coils as we test them. Let's try on this one. So that one says 6.1, which is about consistent with 6.3, but what about if we switch it around? So that we're consistent with our previous measurements. This one reads 1.9, which follows these ones as well. Okay, so you want to do this for the rest of them. And you can use your results to compare to find out you, you might have some ones that are out of the range, not consistent with the rest of them, and that one might be faulty. You know, a way to be fully sure uh, that you're getting the right readings is to get a diagram, get a wiring sheet of the ignition coils and find what's the proper resistance that you should be reading. Uh, you know, I'm studying mechanical and electrical engineering at Harvard, and this is about what I'm approaching in my studies. We're starting to use uh, wiring sheets, data sheets a lot more, uh, and this is sort of what electrical engineers have to do. But unfortunately, that requires a lot of research, and I already tried looking for some wiring diagrams. It was very hard to find them. I was almost close. There was some people talking on a Honda forum, and apparently they found one from like some Russian forum, but when I tried clicking the link, it didn't open. So yeah, it's uh, very difficult to find them. So I, we should be thankful to all the electrical engineers that planned this out. But if you can't find one, our method should work. It, it's either consistently good or it's consistently bad. Uh, and this should lead you to be able to find if one, just one ignition coil or two or three are faulty. Something that people suggest, and would work for other cars, granted, is to swap out the ignition coil and see if it works um, with a swapped out ignition coil. If it works the same with a swapped out ignition coil, that means that the ignition coil before is not faulty. But if the performance changes, you know, if it starts working better, that means that the previous ignition coil must be faulty. However, on this car specifically, a Honda Insight, that method is unreliable because this four-cylinder car has two ignition coils per cylinder. So even if you switch out one ignition coil, it could still have the same performance because the other ignition coil is working to cover that one. So yeah, that, that's our method of diagnosing which ignition coils might be faulty. I mean, obviously if you read a resistance of zero, that means there's definitely a short. Uh, you know, on the more blurry cases, if you find something inconsistent, that's where the method might get more questionable. But this is a method that we want to put out there for other people who are just trying to find out if their ignition coils are faulty. You know, there's a ton of videos out there on testing your ignition coil. 
sorry for the flowing back in the background. But you know, we just want to put it out there and help other people and see if other people have comments on if this method works. You know, we're not experts on this. We're also amateurs, but at least our our method, like it sounds, sound. I mean, logically, it makes sense that if you compare them together, they should generally have the same readings. Uh, and so if you have any thoughts about it, comment down below. And if we helped you, then also comment. You know, we have to make this video because Honda Insights, they, they, their ignition coil looks different than other ignition coils. There are, there are similar videos on YouTube that uh, show you how to test the ignition coil, but those look different. And when I was looking it up, I was like, that doesn't look like the ignition coil that we have. And so we have to do this one specifically for a Honda Insight. But in any case, I hope this method works out for you guys. I'm Ayman, and today I showed you how to test if the ignition coil is faulty by comparing it with the other ones. Uh, thanks for watching, please like and comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on I and Ayman, especially the ones I mentioned before about how to replace and remove how to remove and replace a spark plug and ignition coil on a Honda Insight Generation 2, and also about the error codes, 0300. And I'll see you there. But for now, I'm Ayman, and signing out. All right, so next we're gonna to try to install the spark plugs on the back. This is a bit harder to do. Um, so we're gonna try our best to give you a good angle. So let's take out a spark plug. And same as, you know, removing it, we had to use a, an assortment of tools that were arranged and then we had to angle it. We're also gonna to have to use um, a bit of a unique arrangement of tools to, so that we can get the right angle for insertion. But before we do that, first we're going to put anti-seize on the spark plugs. 